Join me for a reading of my new book, The Dead Zoo, at the Natural History Museum of the Dublin Book Festival 2020. One of my favourite places to visit as a child is the Dead Zoo in Dublin. My new book, which came out in September 2020, takes place inside the Dead Zoo, and um, I'd like you to come inside today and hear all about it. Glad you're with your friends to hear the story, all right? The Dead Zoo. Mr. Gray was a serious man. He kept his tie perfectly straight, his moustache perfectly combed, and an important bunch of keys on his hips at all times. What would you say the keys were for? For the museum, very good. He owned a very old museum in the middle of a very big city. And the people in the city called the museum the Dead Zoo. Inside, Mr. Gray kept a collection of stuffed animals. See them all around us? There was an elephant from Africa. Behind me here. There was a tiger from Bengal, and I'll show you him later. And a great, you've seen it, and a great white shark from the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> and a whale up there. And a whale. What's that big long tail? I think that's from a whale, is it? There were skeletons too. Yeah, I saw that. Like a giant Irish elk. It's like a big deer. And okay, even a dodo bird from Mauritius, which is a funny looking bird, which we look out for. I saw a big bird. You see the big bird? There's lots of big birds in here. Well, I've seen, well, I've seen that big eagle. Now, every day, children like you guys came to visit the museum, but Mr. Gray had some very strict rules. I tell you the rules. There was no talking, no laughing, no running about, and most importantly, definitely no touching their animals. It would be fair to say that Mr. Gray he didn't like people very much. In fact, he preferred the company of his stuffed animals instead, and that's why he's no friends. Yes, indeed, Mr. Gray was a very serious man. Do you like Mr. Gray? Yeah. One evening, as Mr. Gray was preparing to lock up his museum, he heard an unusual sound coming from the corner of the hall. Good heavens, screamed Mr. Gray in horror. A mouse! Now, you and I know that a mouse is just a teeny weeny for young, don't we? That could live happily inside a very old museum. But to Mr. Gray, a real live creature didn't belong in the dead zoo. Animals were supposed to be still and quiet and stuffed like all these animals. On hearing Mr. Gray's scream, the little mouse darted across the wooden floorboards. See all the floorboards here? and down through the hallway, all the way down there. Mr. Gray grabbed the first thing that he could find, his large butterfly net. 
and he set off in pursuit. You know what a butterfly net is? Did you ever see one? It's like a big fishing net, exactly. Wait, I saw butterflies. We, 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 we got new, new nets. Yeah, and I have got a net. You have a net? Well, he had a big net for catching butterflies. And he thought, like, I could catch this mouse with this butterfly net. Do you think he'll catch him? Yeah. Can I tell you what happened? Yeah. Leapt into action, but the little mouse was much too fast for him. She sped towards the African elephant, just behind me, running up its long trunk. See its trunk? Mm -hmm. Across its enormous back, and down its short tail, landing safely on the head of a stuffed duck. I think it's on the road. Did you? You'll have to show me that later as well. Next, he almost caught her as she skipped across a joint walrus. Can you see a joint walrus anywhere? Yeah. Just there, look. But once again, she escaped just in time. Couldn't catch her. Aha, thought Mr. Gray, as he noticed her scurrying towards a cabinet of tiny mammals. He would surely catch her this time, but he just could not find her anywhere. And he said to himself, I could have sworn that pesky mouse was hiding somewhere. Mm. It's hiding somewhere, isn't she? Yeah. Mr. Gray had just got a moment to catch his breath when he heard the rattle of tiny feet above, over his head. There she was, standing proudly on the top of a great Irish elk. Can you see her? Mr. Gray swung his net, but alas, it got tangled on the joint antlers, and this mouse was becoming a real nuisance. Once again, Mr. Gray found himself chasing the mouse across the museum floor. This time, she weaved beneath the belly of a large rhinoceros. Do you know what a rhinoceros is? Yeah. Then she turned sharply around a family of squirrel monkeys. Until she squidded, oh, skidded <laughs> towards the back of the room. I, she was I, I, I saw monkeys. I, I saw gorillas like monkeys over there. Gorillas and monkeys? And I, and I saw um, the blind squirrels. Flying squirrels. Yeah, they're pretty cool. Now, finally, Mr. Gray had his one big chance. But as he raised his net and prepared to pounce, what happened? Will I tell you? His keys suddenly fell from his hip and bounced between a crack in the floorboard. See those cracks there? Oh golly, now his keys were lost. How would he ever lock up his museum? What's he going to do? He's not going to fit down there, is he? No. Not a little crack. No. Mr. Gray looked at the mouse and the mouse looked back at Mr. Gray and there was a moment of silence. Then, as quick as a flash, the little mouse jumped into the crack right down there <clears throat> and disappeared from sight. And Mr. Gray waited anxiously. And a few minutes passed. What do you think happened? Do you think so? You have to say it very quiet because you can't talk in this museum. What do you think happened? He got his keys. You think so? What do you think? You get the keys. You find out. Suddenly, the little mouse popped her head up from the crack in the floorboards, holding Mr. Gray's keys. You were right. <clears throat> he slowly reached down and he took them from her hands. Ah, uh, thank you, said Mr. Gray. You know what? Maybe having a little friend like a mouse wouldn't be a bad idea after all. She could help Mr. Gray keep his museum nice and clean, reaching all the places he couldn't. She could dust the tall antlers, shine the small cabinets, and even help him find his keys if he ever lost them again. In return, Mr. Gray's new friend could live in the museum for as long as she wanted. And this made the little mouse smile, and it made Mr. Gray smile too. It felt good to smile and to have a friend. From that day on, Every time the children came to visit the museum, Mr. Gray and the mouse would welcome them with open arms. The dead zoo became a wonderful place for the fun and games. 
Mr. Gray was now happy to let the children enjoy his museum and to talk, to laugh, to run about. Uh, hang on, wait a minute. No, 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 no. There was no touching the animals. He was still a little serious about that one rule. The end. Did you like that story? Now, are you guys going to draw along as well? Yeah. What kind of ears does a tiger have? I'll show you. Big ears. Big. Kind of has ears like that. Look. Yeah, that's, 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 that's a teddy bear. No, teddy bear is exactly. And he has stripes, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. How many eyes does he have? Two. You sure? Yeah. Okay. I think he does. Everybody has two eyes. The moths have eyes in their wings, but they're not real. Oh, good. But they're not real eyes. Now this one's a cute tiger, okay? You don't want a scary one. A cute one. Is he smiling? Will we make him smile? Yeah. Because he's happy to be in the museum, isn't he? Yeah. Maybe stick his tongue out, look. Because he's thirsty. <laughs> Let's see. Now we're going to draw the tiger. Now we have to do a body on him. He has stripes everywhere, doesn't he? And if you were to colour him in, what colour would you do with stripes? Oh, it's orange and it's black. It's orange it's and black, it's very good. It's, 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 it's like a tiger. It's like a tiger, very good. I want that to you. We give him eyebrows as well. Like he is a tiger. Eyebrows. Will we do him sitting down? No. Standing up? Fluffy wood belly. He's got big paws. Did you ever see a tiger's paws? Oh, we were at the zoo, so we saw them. You seen a real tiger? Yeah, I've seen one. Have you? The real tiger. I've seen a tiger. I've seen a tiger and a leopard. We've seen Peter's. I think there might be a tiger in here. I haven't really. Yeah, there actually is. Did you see it? I haven't really seen a cheetah or, or a puma. You might see some in here. I don't know. We, we can have a look around. And he has stripes on his legs as well. Yeah, you never know. I thought. Does he have back legs? Yeah. My brother is so scribbling. What kind of tail does he have? A long I think they have long tails, don't they? Yeah. Do they have stripes on them? About yeah. this long. Like really long. You know why they have long tails? About this long. Like that. About, about, about this long. Very good. And I forgot his other leg. No, it's like this long. It's about the end. Now, what's he missing? On his body. What does he need? Stripes. All the stripes, exactly. Stripes. So yeah, when you're colour, if you're colouring him in, and you can take this one home with you, colour him in orange. His black stripes. And he's got a white belly there. What kind of sound do they make? They all go roar, don't they? They yes. go standing on some rocks. Oh, I forgot his whiskers. Because he is a cat, and all cats have whiskers. Yeah. And dogs. And dogs. And look, he's really long one, stuff. Are you laughing at us? Oh, yes. And? That's a whisker. Mr. Gray had a butterfly there, hadn't he? Yeah. So maybe there's a butterfly flying up there. And the sun is out because he lives in a hot country.
Ah!